Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is September 14th, and right now we're looking at the visible satellite imagery. You can see the marine layer up and down the California coastline infiltrating its way into Southern, Southern California, the Bay Area, into the valleys here. But as we go through the late morning hours and early afternoon, of course, it'll start to burn off as we go. Got some thunderstorm chances, mainly across the higher terrain in east. We'll look at those details. We'll also look at the persistent trophy. It looks like it's going to be setting up here off the California coastline. Then we'll look off into Fantasyland as a deeper trough tries to make its way so Somewhere towards Pacific Northwest, a couple of the model runs been showing it moving a little bit further south. We'll look at those details. You can also see here, if you look close enough on the GOES-18 satellite imagery, you can see some of this forest fire smoke here across Northwest California, making its way off to the west here over the water. So interesting stuff there. Always a good view here on the GOES-18 satellite. This is looking at the HER, the visibility in miles. And as we scroll through here, you can notice something interesting. Did you see that shading kind of go away across the valley there? That's just the daytime heating warms things up. But then you can see as you go through the evening and afternoon hours, you're going to see the terrain feature where this cooler air can flow into some of the valley areas. Of course, the fog is not as dense usually as across much of the coastal areas, although it can get, you know, you can get some pretty dense fog in the valley under the right conditions here. But then you can see that dissipate as you go through the afternoon hour and rinse and repeat here as you start to go on and towards the weekend. It's kind of an interesting look at there at the marine layer. This day in SoCal weather history, a little bit of a nitpick here, but they talk about this large and intimidating funnel cloud here observed near Warner Springs. That was probably a tornado, folks. Just because you can't see damage once you go check things out on the ground, I don't know what you expected to do to sagebrush out there. That's a pretty good uh, look at things. I know it might be on the backside of the hill there, but that is almost certainly a tornado. I would probably bet that that had touched down at some point there. But interesting there. They said it didn't. But yeah, anyway, a little bit of a nitpick there. But interesting stuff. Always good stuff here from the National Weather Service San Diego. And this is looking a couple of days ago. Check out some of these straight line winds, 60 to 90 miles per hour, brought down some trees, flipping some planes out there as well. So interesting stuff with some of the stronger thunderstorm activity across south central Arizona. Look at Phoenix, actually uh, below average yesterday, three degrees. So not bad. Record high set back in 2000 of 109. This is a National Weather Service Hanford, and there's going to be some thunderstorm activity again. You guys know the drill. Thunder roars, go indoors, yada, 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 unless you're a storm chaser. Here we go with the day one outlook. You can see Sierra Nevada off portions of the east, a lot of Arizona, Nevada, and Utah. We'll also look at the excessive rainfall outlook here in a moment. But you can see day two as we go through Friday into Saturday morning as well. Kind of a little bit of a repeat here, but the signal should not be quite as strong, probably more isolated in nature. Now, this is the day one excessive rainfall outlook. You can see it does include extreme eastern California and portions of Las Vegas here, northern Arizona and Utah with that flash flood potential with any some, one of these storms, but it's still a marginal risk here. This is three-hour precipitation total, the NAM 3KM high-resolution models. We go through the afternoon, you kind of see this thunderstorm activity pop up across the Sierra Nevada, some of Nevada, Arizona, and Utah there, and it wanes into the overnight and the morning hours. Then we bring the thunderstorms back, but you can see the signal not quite as strong tomorrow. Still maybe a couple showers here across the Sierra Nevada here. And as we go on in through Saturday afternoon, just the slightest tent across some of the northern, uh, sorry, Sierra Nevada here of California. But you can see there's actually a little bit of some activity over, over a half an inch there in a three-hour period. So maybe some very localized flooding concerns associated with that. Now, looking at a, a wider view of things here on the GFS, this is looking at the 12Z run. This is hot off the presses. Again, 18,000 feet, 500 millibars. And this is what's going to be kicking off the thunderstorm activity. Some troughing here as a ridge builds into the Pacific North Bus. And then the upper level trough is going to come visit us here as we go on in through the weekend into next week here keeping things seasonable and kicking off some higher terrain thunderstorms possibly with that kind of persistent feature there trough swings down the model's been uh, flip-flopping back and forth just how this is going to evolve to evolve as we look out through next week another ridge builds across pacific northwest and then if we look at a little bit further let me update that because we got new model data coming in here there it goes and you can see uh, there's some interesting troughing here showing up in the extended here but the gfs kind of all over the place of this as well. Look at this ridge across the Gulf of Alaska with this trough moving out of it across uh, the Pacific Ocean, the upper level low, pretty persistent showing up in the models here for the next week or so. Looking at yesterday afternoon's uh, European, there goes that ridge across Pacific Northwest. There goes our upper level low off the coast of California. It's not going to let us warm up too much. You see that trough drop down across the Intermountain West there. Ridge builds, another system swings through. And then we're getting this interesting signal if you look out far enough into the forecast here for some deep troughing along some of the West Coast here. But the control is kind of an outlier here. The ensemble does show the troughing, but a little bit further north. More on that here in a moment. This was looking at the European last night's run. And I'm just kind of showing you here that you do have the thunderstorm chance across some of the higher terrain, maybe even <clears throat> some of Northern California here as we go through Sunday afternoon, for example, there. But yeah, just a heads up for that. The shower should be confined to some of the higher terrain.
And this is looking at 500 millibars, 18,000 feet. You can kind of see that upper level low, set up shop here as we go through the week. And that's what's going to help kick off those thunderstorms across the higher terrain there and keep us seasonable here across much of the southwest USA. This is Sacramento. You can see that kind of average temperatures, nothing special, no big heat wave, no big cool down here coming up for the most part. Looking at Eureka off the coastline there, look at the average temperature, just straight line <laughs> right around the low 60s. And we're not expected to deviate from that too much here. You can see that, uh, as always, when you look at to a forecast, you can see some of the ensembles get a little bit squirrely there, showing some differences, but nothing to worry about right now. Truckee Tahoe, and you can see some of these troughs may move close to some of the intermountain west here and cool us down a bit, but we'll watch that. We have uh, several days to look at that. This is not until uh, the upcoming next week. And this is where Truckee Tahoe Airport is, kind of by Donner Pass there, Lake Tahoe. And Reno would be off over here. And there's Tonopah, Las Vegas, Los Angeles there. Here's Las Vegas. And you can see a little bit of a warm-up as we go through this weekend. And then dropping back down a bit here, we're going to have some of that troughing hanging around. And this is the 8 to 14 day. And I get this below average signal here with the steady upper level low sitting off the coast of California all the way through September 27th. And a little bit of above average signal for precipitation, mainly central, northern California up through the Pacific Northwest. This is something interesting here too. So Siskiyou County Airport here, this is 500 millibars. And you can kind of see what I was showing you with the European control as the control run showing the heights lowering here. That system kind of moving down the coastline there. 5,000 feet, 850 millibars here. You can see that colder air with the blue line but you'll notice the ensemble mean does not agree with that right now and it's really the outlier it's even more extreme than the most extreme ensemble run so it's got why we have to take things with a grain of salt that's why we have to check in with the ensemble members as well and this is looking at that again i showed you this earlier here but that would be the control run that would bring those uh, low upper level heights here in that chilly trough down here, or relatively chilly here, I, I, I need to say. This is looking at the European Ensemble Mean yesterday afternoon versus the GFS Ensemble Mean. Washington, Cal uh, Oregon, California here. There's the Hawaiian Islands in the bottom left. Ridge across Pacific Northwest. There goes our upper level low. The persistent one setting up shop. You'll notice both models kind of keep it around. You can see the troughing hanging out on the West Coast here. There's that next system that swings down across the Intermountain West here. I'm trying to figure this one out here. How far west is this going to trend? Or will it eventually trend a little farther east? We'll continue to watch that as we go. You can see that troughing kind of hang out for a while. And then you can see the models off through the end of September showing that trough that GFS even a little bit more robust with this troughing across the Gulf of Alaska. How far will that extend south? Of course, we've got plenty of time to watch that for now, just a fantasy forecast, but it has been showing up in the last several runs, possibly an increase in some of the storm activity here across Pacific Northwest, trying to reach down towards California a bit. And if you believe the control run here, you look at Siskiyou County Airport and you can see 1.1 inches in a 24 hour period. So it's kind of an interesting thing there, but you can see the ensembles do not agree for the most part, even though some of them do show the potential for a system in that time frame. Redding, something similar there as well and you can see again the control run pretty much being the outlier there and this is out towards eureka on the coastline bringing some precipitation you can see there are some other systems intermixed in here with some of those ensemble runs as well san francisco a little bit of a signal there for some chance of a type of system moving down but again this is way off into the future we're just looking at fantasy stuff right now sacramento that system would bring about a tenth of an inch of rain if it verified as shown. And here we are looking at the min-max temperatures. So again, you can see how chilly the temperatures would get with the control run. But again, the ensemble members do not agree yet. So it's something we'll watch on through the extended forecast here. Reading, something similar there as you can see the control run on the the more extreme end of the ensemble members. And here's where Siskiyou County Airport is here across Northern California. But anyway, yeah, interesting stuff here. The GOES-18 satellite, check it out. Just go ahead and Google that. And you can see some pretty cool satellite imagery. And uh, anyway, um, yeah, before I forget, that El Nino data is out today. So I got a lot of work to do to wrap that up. I made the mistake of running some other Southern Oscillation Index numbers and intermixing them with Los Angeles and Seattle data here. So I've interest, discovered some interesting correlations. I don't know if I'm going to include them just yet, but it's got it's kind of delaying the project or the video a little bit here. But I should have it out here in the next day or two. So anyway, hope you guys are looking forward to that. I'll do my regular briefing tomorrow. And yeah, actually, take a look at that. There's actually some forest fire activity going on down here. Sometimes these are prescribed burns here as well. But yeah, you can see across some of the southern Sierra Nevada there. A little bit of smoke bubbling across the atmosphere. But anyway, yeah, hope you guys are liking these videos. Click like, subscribe, leave some comments below. Tell me what you think, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.